games can be such a good way to relax and rejuvenate after the stress of the real world overwhelms you. At least that's what they do for me. And in my absence from the channel, I played a lot of games to address my burnout, de-stress, and get my mental health back on track. Here are 10 of the best. An adorably wholesome game, Alba, A Wildlife Adventure, is the story of young Alba visiting her grandparents on a Mediterranean island. She thinks she's in for a relaxing vacation exploring while doing a bit of nature photography when, instead, she spends it with her friend Ines, helping the townsfolk and the animals from an even bigger threat. Now I tried playing this game at release and I put it down pretty early but the further I got into the storyline of the game and the more quests I was given and the more animals I identified, the more invested I became. The sound design is amazing and really gives you the feeling of being out in nature which combined with all the animals zipping around and skittering about made things just so soothing just to be in the game. And I can't complain about Alba adorably skipping along this idyllic island either. The story itself can be completed in about a few hours, but I took on the challenge of photographing all of the animals to complete the journal with animal facts and realistic pictures and sounds. It spoke to the collector in me. Dorf Romantic is without a doubt the most zen game on this list and one that I've spent hours upon hours playing, 29 of them to be exact. It is a city builder style puzzle game where you present it with procedurally generated tiles that have little snippets of beautiful hand-drawn landscape on them. I love all of these little teeny tiny houses and windmills and steam trains and all the parts of the world you build. Sometimes I just zoom in to take in all of the small details such as the birds flying overhead or seeing a deer appear out of a cluster of trees. From the colorful biomes, to the soft and gentle music, to the ASMR-like vibe of the ambient nature sounds, this has been a game that I often turn to when I just want to turn off the day and unwind. And if you aren't in the mood for worrying about points or being restricted by whatever tiles the game throws at you, there is a creative mode where you have infinite tiles and you can build whatever landscape you want. Mutazione is one of the older games on this list and it's also one that I have not yet finished. But that's because this is a story-driven game that really takes its time letting the narrative unfold slowly day by day, one chapter at a time. You play as Kai who visits her sick grandfather in Mutazione, a post-apocalyptic community that remains after a meteor strike left the survivors transformed. But despite the rather dramatic premise, this game is focused on the day-to-day -day lives of the people, the healing power of nature, and the quiet drama of life that so many of us experience. I have genuinely started to feel a connection with many of the characters and I want the best for them, but I am the type of person to become super invested in the characters and games, so that wasn't too surprising for me. And even though I am terrible at keeping plants alive in real life, as Kai I am able to grow gardens and unlock secrets of the world in this emotional and spiritual journey. I look forward to seeing how it all ends. Okay, so I decided to try out Tinykin simply because I'm a fan of Pikmin style games, but I had no idea that I would become so hooked so quickly on this adorable little adventure. You play as Milo, an intergalactic astronaut, as he crash lands and ends up being a teeny tiny person in a great big house who just so happens to be the only one that the Tinykin will listen to. You use their abilities to solve platforming puzzles and this game is a dream for players who love to explore and who love to collect. It's cartoony and the writing is quirky and funny and surprisingly geared toward adults at times, but definitely a game that the kids can enjoy. Playing this game just puts you in a good mood and the generous auto saves keeps things from becoming too frustrating if you fall off a bookshelf or something. If you enjoy Pikmin style games or platformers or exploring every nook and cranny as a small person in a big old world, this is a game you should check out too. As a child of the 80s, I was a big fan of Where's Waldo books and I love completing mazes. So Labyrinth City, Pierre the Maze Detective was the perfect marriage of the two. Based on the 2015 book of the same name, it follows the story of Pierre as he tries to recover the stolen maze stone from Mr. X. 
there is just so much going on in each of the levels of this world and I just wanted to interact with all of the over 500 interactable features just to see what would pop out or what weird thing a character would say or funny way things would change. I tried my best to get all of the collectibles and solve all of the puzzles in my first run through a world although unfortunately sometimes once you cross a certain threshold you couldn't cross back. But I can definitely say that this was a nice change of pace from typical puzzle games and one that you can just play a level here or there without feeling the need to fly through the entire thing in one day. And if you'd like to see the first level in action, I have a playthrough of the demo on the channel that I will link in the description that you can check out. But after you finish watching this video, of course. I know rhythm games are not the most popular video game genre, but Rhythm Doctor is really enjoyable. The premise is you're an intern working from home with a specialized defibrillator where you help patients' hearts get back in rhythm. Some patients have irregular heart patterns, sometimes you will have to cure more than one patient at once, and occasionally viruses take over and you can't see the EKG rhythm strips or even the screen. It gets pretty challenging but remains engaging with the fun dialogue of the characters, the charming pixel art style, and the replayability to increase your score. Now it has been in early access for quite some time but they are still working on it. I actually just played a level that they released back in December of 2022 so feel free to wait until full release or check it out now if you'd like. As far as story driven games go, Beacon Pines takes that idea literally as the game is laid out in a storybook format. You play as the main character Luca and to a lesser degree the narrator who guides the story. As cutesy as it may seem on the surface, there is a combination of real life issues such as grief and bullying as well as supernatural ones such as having to figure out what is happening to the town and how to save it from a disastrous future. There are branching paths and multiple endings and how many endings you find are determined by the various charms that you collect to change the course of your adventure. That's all I can really say without spoiling it and if you don't mind reading quite a bit admittedly, you should try this one out. And be sure to let me know in the comments what are some of your favorite story driven games, even if they aren't told through a literal storybook. Disney Dreamlight Valley felt like it went relatively unnoticed until it was released and then it kind of blew up. It's an RPG, life sim, farm sim style game from Disney so many of the villagers you already know and love. It is presently in early access and there are a variety of costs to the game depending on which founders pack you choose but it will be free to play in the future. I have a uh, complicated relationship with this game because there is always something to do. So it's great that you don't run out of tasks but after a while it starts to feel a bit grindy. But I will say that planting or harvesting 200 pumpkins at a time does feel rather therapeutic. But then you decide to stop playing but the game hooks you with another request by a character and you keep saying let me do this one last thing and then before you know it another hour goes by or two. All of the typical farm skill fare there such as mining, fishing, gardening, exploring and building up the town. But there's also a mysterious storyline and a lot of Disney magic. If you're a fan of games like Stardew Valley or Story of Seasons or My Time at Sandrock, then you should give this one a try. Black and white games are kind of underrated, but Toem is not one of them. Getting pretty solid reviews across a number of platforms, it was due to this glowing praise that I decided to give Toem a chance. And I was pleasantly surprised. Armed with your trusty camera, you take pictures of your world and help the people of this adorably cute hand-drawn little adventure. I love that many of the quests are not spoon-fed to you but instead you get hints or clues and you have to figure out a lot of them on your own. But I didn't mind because this game has a chill soundtrack and the people of the world are pretty fun and eccentric. I even forgot the game was in black and white a few times because the characters have some colorful personalities. There is an overarching storyline of course but I had more fun figuring out which pictures the NPCs wanted and I gave myself a little pat on the back when I got things right. It's a short game, just about two or three hours if you play straight through but it will add a couple of hours if you go back for all of the side quests which I highly suggest. Back when Sable first launched I made a review but at that time it was based solely on the demo but OMG after spending hours and hours with Sable I have to say that it has been one of my favorite exploration games released in the last couple of years. And by exploration I do mean exploration because there is a lot of it. 
The collectibles in this game are spread around a pretty expansive world where Sable leaves her clan to go on her gliding, a rite of passage where she decides what her role will be in life through the masks she chooses. This game is mainly comprised of side quests given to you by members of various clans and nomads you run across, and it will have you poking around in ancient ruins and abandoned spaceships. I challenged myself to 100% this game by earning every mask, which was not the easiest of tasks. Get ready to do some climbing. Lots and lots of climbing. I often played this game on a Sunday morning while sipping a cup of coffee and taking in the chill soundtrack while canvassing the landscape on Sable's hoverbike Sea Moon. If you want to see a little bit more of the game, I have a review of Sable for you right here.